Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm very excited to talk to you all today about a question that I still get asked all the time, which is how I made the transition from QA into development. So I'm going to do another video talking about my transition as in in as much detail as possible. So afterwards, you hopefully have a clear understanding as to how my transition happened. And if you have any other questions, let me know down below. And if you're not already, subscribe to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, I started out uh, as I started my career out as a QA prior to starting my career, I went to a boot camp uh, for full stack development. Afterwards, there was a company I really wanted to work for, but there wasn't a developer position. And to be honest, I felt at the time like my development skills were not where they needed to be to really work full time as a developer. I really wanted to continue to grow them and uh, improve them so when I did get that position I wasn't completely like poof, overwhelmed uh, so going into QA prior to development was a really good kind of starting point for that also to the QA I started out doing was manual so I was not doing any um, automated QA it was all manual so it was literally because it was all on hardware like testing out different hardware and have the software operated on that and and different things like that um, so I wasn't writing any unit tests I wasn't writing uh, any code at the time for the first few months of QA but it did give me a really good understanding of uh, how the software work what it was about and um, different things to look for when testing out software and different use cases to make, different regression tests to do, different things like that. So it still was a very valuable learning experience. But at the end of the day, I knew from day one that I wanted to get into a development position. So during my time as a QA, I would go home and spend like all my free time working on improving my coding or development skills. And I did that for a while to the point where I was like, hey, I'm just like, I need to move to the next step. I need to become a developer. It was just like a very, I was ready. So then what I started doing at work was rather than, you know, asking other people, I just kind of took initiative and started while queuing, getting into the code more, playing around with it, like, okay, like this makes sense. This makes sense. And obviously they, they said that was fine to do. Um, and really learning, uh, how to kind of identify different bugs, find different things, and really use the skills that I was learned learned in my boot camp and then learned after my boot camp to actual um, like everyday use. So once I did that for a while, I started taking on smaller tickets. So it'd be things like mostly styling related tickets of uh, things that needed to get done. And then once I did a few of those, I got bigger and bigger tickets until fully the transition happened. And I started out after the transition doing mostly front end. And now I do like 99% back end. Um, but it was a really seamless transition for me. I was lucky that I was able to transition from QA to developer within the same company. I think that really helped um, with my transition being so smooth because they knew my background, I was there for a while, I was familiar with their product, so making the transition into a developer wasn't as um, scary or nerve-wracking, I guess, as it would be uh, switching companies to do that, so that was a really easy way. So if you can do that, I would suggest that is a really seamless way to kind of get into it if you can do it with the same company. That being said, I was at or am at a smaller company, so it's easier to kind of make those transitions when you're in a bigger company. Um, there's often logistics and red tape and everything in between, but if you can, that's a great way to do it. And other things that I really noted when I was making my transition, how I tried to really, as far as make that transition from, um, you know, a standpoint of getting into a new position was I really highlighted the skills that QA brought me and how those skills can help me with development. So things like, um, you know, learning how to test code, learning how to um, test your product, really identify where there might be weak areas, different things like that, that QA really, really taught me. Being able to show that I could transfer those, that to development um, was a really good way of highlighting how my past experience with QA can then help me with development. So I would definitely suggest trying to highlight uh, your experience as QA if you're someone who's done QA before, rather than trying to be like, oh, well, 
I'm new to development, I've never done it before, even, even just highlighting small things that you do in QA and how that can reflect into your new position as a developer, I think is essential. Um, even if it's not QA, even if you come from like a marketing background or something totally unrelated, highlight those skills, what you learned and how that can help in development. Even if it's not directly related, things like, oh, I can see how the end user might see this or would feel about this or uh, would want to use this, different things like that. Um, really highlighting skills that you have from a background rather than trying to be like, oh, I've never done this before, this is new to me. I mean, obviously it's new, but have also to, you know, really recognize your worth in your past experience because it's there and you just need to highlight it and show that, that those skills, even if they're not directly related, can still help you. So my transition afterwards, once I became a developer, I fully stopped doing QA. I mean, obviously doing QA still as a developer, but not full-time role. And yeah, that's kind of it. I, I uh, would suggest for anyone who's in that position, whether it's your full-time manual QA or you are doing um, some coding as well in your QA role, if you want to make that switch, talk to your managers, really highlight that you want to make that switch and also to take things into your own hands as long as you are able to um, with permissions start playing around with the code even if it's just kind of like little bugs here or there that you're fixing to really show that you want to take initiative and you do want to move into that role and also at the end of the day if you're completely set on moving into development and your company is just not letting you they're like you're an amazing QA we want you to stay right where you are then go look for another company that will take you as a developer because there are so many amazing companies out there and um, you really need to know your worth that even if you are a junior developer, you can still go out there and find an amazing job. You don't have to stay put in the position you are in. I hope that helps some of you with understanding a bit of my journey from QA to developer. Um, I was really lucky that it was a smooth transition. I know that's not always the case, but I think the main thing that I really did was I believed in myself and I put myself first and really was, um, for lack of a better term, a cheerleader for myself being like, hey, I can do this. I can do this. I want to do this. Putting myself forward and let's go with it. And really recognizing that if you aren't your own cheerleader and you're not putting yourself forward, not no one else is going to. They don't know. So you really need to be highlighting this to your manager or whomever that this is a transition you want to make. And even if they're like, yeah, we'll see, I don't know, just keep on pushing. And eventually if it doesn't get there, then go find another company that will take you as a developer. Um, the only thing is when you are QA leading up to development, if you're still learning development, you might have to put in, like I said, I did extra hours outside of work, get up to speed and get to a place where um, you can take on a development role. But totally worth it and it's totally possible and okay i hope that helped you if you have other questions let me know down below and i will see you all soon thanks everyone